Welcome back for the third video where we are learning how to use Node and Express. And so far we've created a basic server using Express and we set up a couple basic get endpoints. Um, before I go any further, what I really wanted to talk about real quickly was sort of a bigger picture of what's happening with what is exactly an API and how does it fit into the picture. So I am borrowing a picture that I got from W3 schools, hope they don't mind. And so basically, and let me use an annotation tool here. So, um, all right, so let me see, draw, there we go. And so basically we have a client or a user and they make a request through the cloud using HTTP protocol, HTTP, and that goes through the cloud and then it hits an API or a server somewhere. An API means application program programming interface. It's some repository of information that sits on a server somewhere that contains information that we wish to consume or to use or to utilize in some way. And the client sends HTT, this, it looks like two H's, but this is really um, TTP. Um, the client sends this request in the form of a JSON. So this JSON object goes through the cloud via HTTP protocol and it hits the back end of the server. And so our API, we're gonna call this API, API. It, it hits a resource. And basically, the API contains within it a bunch of resources, a bunch of information. And when the client asks for, for some information or wants to update some information, it sends an object, and so then how does it know where to go in the API? Well, it uses the URL, so the client types the URL, like www.youtube.com forward slash something to go to a specific video, or just youtube.com. If it just types youtube.com, then that's a URL, and it goes back to a server, and the server finds YouTube, and it'll find the information, and it'll return back through the cloud a response, also in the form of a JSON, and it'll return a response back, and the response comes back, either successful or unsuccessful. Either way, it's gonna return a response. We've all gotten the unsuccessful response, the 404 not found, or you can have a successful response in your web page loads or whatever URL you type, then it knows how to get to that specific thing. For instance, if I type www.youtube.com forward slash the specific address of a specific video, then it knows how to go over here and find that resource. So a server contains resources. I'll just put RES, well, resources. Well, I'll spare you from having to type the rest of it out. It's, it's it has resources. And these resources are basically endpoints that lets the server know exactly where to go within itself or the app or, or the API, where to go specifically to find that specific information that you wish to either add or update or get or, or delete. <clears throat> and that's sort of the big picture. And so what we're doing is we're creating this, this part back here. Um, you all hopefully know how to do the front end with React, you know how to consume information. With React or Vue or whatever your front end tool is, you uh, are, are familiar with fetching information from an API or doing an axios.get from an API. So we knew how to consume data 
But now we're writing this part over here where we're learning how to set up the data repository itself and the, um, and the instructions on how this part works. So let me just clear all this, clear all drawings and get rid of this annotation tool. And let's go back to our code base here. <clears throat> now, so far we set up two very elementary get endpoints. And um, to do that, we used an internet browser to test them. We, we set these up and then we went to an internet browser and we went to localhost 5000 slash and we got this back. And we went to localhost slash hello and we got this back. Web browsers are great for doing get responses. Matter of fact is every time you type a URL into a web browser and hit enter, you are performing de facto get a, a, a get request. And, um, but for us to set up a post and an update and a delete, we have to have some other way of testing our code as we develop. And in order to do that, um, developers usually use one of two tools. I think there might be others, but the two most popular are Postman and Insomnia. And um, Postman is a very popular tool. Um, you can go to postman.com downloads. If you have Windows, it'll automatically detect that. And it basically is an area where you can type a URL address like right here, and you can hit a drop down and specify whether it's a get or a post or a delete or an update and click send and it acts just if it's a get request it'll act just like a web browser and it'll return to you within this area the json or the or the response that um, you expect to get back um, we're going to be using these tools to test our post update and delete um, and i uh, and here's another tool that's just as popular. I, I tend to prefer this one, but to tell you the truth, I, I, I use both. Sometimes one will get hung up or stuck and then I'll go to the other one, but it's the same kind of thing. You will type into it a URL and um, this happens to be a post request and you click send and it'll, um, it'll give you back the response um, that us as developers need in order to test our development of writing these endpoints. And so that, um, those are two tools that you need to install before we can actually uh, develop our post endpoint and to test it any further. So um, hopefully that was helpful to you, the big picture. And now please go and download either um, Postman and install it uh, or insomnia and install it they both basically work the same and after you have it installed then we will um, start the next video where we the first thing we do is we'll set up a post request um, okay i look forward to seeing you in the next video